go. Come on out. Wow, we've got all kinds of things. Geese coming back. Let's head up towards, uh, towards Carroll Street Bridge. All right, good morning, good morning. It's not a better way to start the morning, you know? Get some fresh air, see the sun coming up. It really is quite a natural experience being out on the water, much more so than you would expect. Well, I get a lot of weird looks, even though I've only been out a few times, I get a lot of weird looks from people saying like, oh, you're going in that body of water. I've been called the poop paddler. Somebody yelled at me off the bridge one time. Hey, it's the poop paddler. I was like, oh, okay, that's pretty funny, actually. I like that one. Um, might start hashtagging that. The club was started in 1999 when a bunch of people got together around a table and said what can we do to raise the profile of the canal so that it actually gets the attention and starts the process towards a cleanup. Well, they had enough money that they put on the table that evening to buy one canoe and that's how the canoe club was formed. And so they bought more canoes and that started getting people down to the water. People started, again, as ironic as it may be, once you get people interacting in some fashion with the water. Um, you start building a constituency that can drive that process forward. I learned about the dredgers last fall. There were a group of people that were out racing on the canal. I was just completely blown away by that idea uh, that anyone would be able to go out on the canal and paddle. So immediately when I heard that, I kind of fell in love with that. I've been caught in a thunderstorm out in Gowanus Bay. I literally had to paddle against a tide of condoms, rubber gloves, occasional pads. You're dodging anything that looks like a lump and you don't want to get too close to it. Brown trout, there's brown trout in the Gowanus. I have loved water sports for a long time. I grew up in Colorado and have um, done a lot of whitewater rafting. So this is far from whitewater and wouldn't want to, wouldn't want to be as close to the water as we get in those situations, but it's a nice way to stay on a boat and stay paddling. I started canoeing out on the canal last year, maybe a little over, a little less than a year ago. Um, I loved it immediately, uh, something I miss the most uh, from gr having grown up in the woods and coming here to New York is kind of having a natural experience. And while canoeing in a toxic waterway uh, might not sound natural, there's actually a lot of amazing um, natural moments. Sometimes early mornings, if we've all have a free morning, we'll get up a little bit early so that we have time before work to gather at the boathouse. Uh, you know, first things first, we sign our waivers, get our life jackets on, we'll drag the canoes out, we'll hop on the boats and paddle away. And usually we get in, you know, 30 minutes, an hour of paddling, um, easy paddling, just exploring the different basins up and down the canal. There's actually quite a bit to see. And then eventually we'll make our way back to the docks. Hopefully the tide hasn't fallen too much in that time. Pull the boats back to the boathouse, take our life jackets off, and use the hand sanitizer. It's nice to canoe during high tide because the water is cleaner. There's just more water diluting any of the bad stuff in it. Low tide, you can see mounds of sediment sometimes, and that's actually the most polluted part of, of the canal. So when you see those sediment mounds, those are what you want to avoid coming into contact with. It's important for people to see that there are people using the canal, and the more people who do that, um, the more important it becomes to clean it up, to build more access points, to develop the culture of boating on the canal.